Hi, welcome back to AP Physics C, Electricity and Magnetism. This is Unit 2, uh, Conductors, Capacitors, and Dielectrics. This is the last video of this unit. This, so this unit is very short, um, but it's very heavy, right, moving forward, especially because the conductor portion pretty much ended electrostatics, and now we're going to move into circuits, which is, is kind of like the, the segue talking about capacitors and dielectrics, okay? So a dielectric, the way to think about it is that a dielectric is just any non-conducting material, um, such as air, glass, paper, and wood, okay? Um, so in the last video, when we looked at capacitors, the, the dielectric inside those capacitors was air, okay? And so what happens is we take that gap between the, the conductor, or between the two conductors, between the parallel plates, and we put something in between it. Here in this video, we're going to focus on putting something in between it. Where in the last video, that something was air, okay? And there's a factor that we call the dielectric constant that changes the characteristic of that capacitor. It changes all the, the, the um, values of that capacitor. It changes the capacitance. It changes the, the stored energy. It changes the E field. In fact, it weakens the E field, okay, once you put that dielectric in it, okay? The dielectric constant is what we call kappa, okay, which is K. And you can see here in most textbooks, they do have a table, table very similar um, where it does focus on those dielectric constants. And if you look right here, um, air is approximately 1, okay? So with that information, knowing that the... E field is weakened, we can now calculate the new E field by simply doing a this calculation, right? Which is our initial E field, which are which is think about the initial as with air or with no dielectric in between it, um, divided by kappa. And you could see that E0 will always be greater than that new electric field. Okay. In fact, the dielectric constant is the ratio of the initial E field over the new E field, okay? Now, like I said, it changes everything about that capacitor. It changes the E field between the plates. It changes the electric potential, right? And so it's just simply going to be V0, your initial voltage, divided by your, your kappa, right? And if we have a parallel plate capacitor, it's just simply going to be QD, over kappa epsilon naught a, right? Where if you actually look at this, this is basically saying one over k times our initial um, our initial voltage, okay? Which means now the capacitance changes, right? So it's going to be c c zero is k c. Now the dielectric constant is often defined by this ratio which is the ratio of your initial capacitance to your new capacitance, okay? And then, again, changing everything about the capacitance, which means the amount of store chart or storage energy, right? It's going to be our initial divided by kappa. So you can see we change everything about our values, right? So all those equations that we talked about in the last video, it all has this kappa running around in it now. Right? And so there's all the ways that you can change this capacitor based on sliding something in between those two metal plates. Okay? So let's look at an example where we compare capaci you know, a, cap uh, a capacitor with what we label here as a dielectric. All right, so here we have a parallel plate capacitor with square plates of edge 10 centimeters and separated by 4 millimeters. Then we have a dielectric slab of constant K equal to 2.0 and having dimensions of 10 by 10 by 4, right? So it's a cute, like a 10 by 10 by 4 uh, rectangular prism. So what is the capacitance without the dielectric? What is the capacitance if the dielectric slab fills the space between the plates? And then by what percentage does the electric field weaken when the slab is inserted? 
okay? So A, very simple. It's what we did in the last video. Capacitance is equal to epsilon naught A over D, right? So 8.854 times 10 to the negative 12th times A, which is 0 0.10 squared, divided by, point zero, or by 4 times 10 to the negative 3. Right, so our capacitance without the dielectric is 2.21 times 10 to the negative 11th farads. Okay, now we're going to slide the, the dielectric into the capacitor to fill that entire space. Okay, so all we have to do is simply do kappa times our initial. Now, if you want, like, formula-wise, full-fledged formula, it's just simply kappa epsilon naught A over D, which then you can use those numbers, but we've already calculated, we've already done this calculation right here. It's our 2.21 number. So all we're going to do is do 2.0 times 2.21 times 10 to the negative 11th farads, and that's going to give us a value of 4.42 times 10 to the negative 11th farads. So what you can see here is our capacitance has increased, okay? But what's happening is our electric field, right, as we highlighted on the, on the note slide, our electric field goes down, okay? And our, the way we look at it is our new electric field is going to be compared to our old one by simply kappa. And so what we're doing here is like one-half E0, so one half turned into a percentage is 50%. So our new electric field is 50% weaker than our old one because our kappa is two, okay? Um, so we're going to, so when we talk about circuits, we're going to talk, bring in capacitors and dielectrics and so forth. So this ends just the general information piece of what are capacitors? What are dielectrics? How do conductors in electric fields act? How did the electric potential, right? Uh, how does an electric potential of a conductor act? So looking for the unit three, which is now when we're going to start talking about circuits. Um, and this is a recent, you know, last year in 2020, 2021, they made the decision, AP, uh, College Board did, of removing this part of the class, the circuits part of the class from AP Physics 1. So if you had AP Physics 1 last year, this is completely new, um, or in the past, this is completely new information to you.